issues facing Christians today. I often hear people say that their church has the best worship and that other church worship services are inferior. Or I hear that a, a person has moved churches because the experience is different and better there. What are we to think as Christians in the 21st century about biblical worship? Today in the 21st century, there are many different churches, all using different worship styles in order to worship the one true and living God. We can even think of different churches in the New Testament worshipping differently, such as the Church of Philippi being more liturgical and ordered while the church of Corinth is more free and less controlled. As his followers and his worshippers, we are required to worship God and to worship him publicly with others. There is a meaning of worship whereby our very life is to be a spiritual act of worship, according to Paul in Romans chapter 12. Paul meant that every aspect of our life is to be an act of worship, of reverence to God where our life is to be for the majesty and honour of God. However, the definition of worship I want to talk about today is about public acts of worship, such as in a church or a chapel service, where worshipping is to give respect, honour, glory and majesty to God and God alone. And when this is done in reverence, in truth and in submission to the Lord Jesus Christ, then the Christian disciple continues to mature and grow spiritually. So let's look together at the what, why and how of biblical worship. So what is worship? Worship is by a way of act, attitude, thought or words, a way of giving supreme honour and reverence to God. And as followers of God, God Almighty alone is to be worthy of our reverence, submission and worship. There are many other things that are worshipped and thus are God's, with a small g. Money, careers, possessions, other people are 21st century examples of things which are worshipped by humans. Thus the threat of materialism is a huge danger to Christian disciples because the worship of material possessions takes the supreme place of worship to God and some who would call themselves Christian disciples have been duped by it. But the Bible clearly states that God alone is to be worshipped, for God is to carry the worshipping Christian, and not the Christian disciple to carry the God. So why worship? Perhaps the greatest reason that we worship is because God commands it. The Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 21, insists that God alone is to be worshipped, adored and paid homage to. And as human beings we are made in his image, and as Christian disciples he owns us because we claim Jesus to be our Lord and our Master. So it is right and just that we give worship to this God who paid the penalty for sin so that we may be his children, and he wants us to call him Father. And as Christian disciples, we discover an inner personal satisfaction when God is worshipped and adored, both for the present and in the future. Romans 12 verse 2 and Colossians 3 verse 24. And another reason to give worship is that God deserves our worship. All of God's attributes demand that we revere, Glorify and worship him. His holiness, goodness, love, mercy and providence are but a beginning as to why he and he alone is worthy of our worship. It is by his grace and through his grace alone that we worship him. How are we to worship? In some church services, a general confession of sin comes at the start. This is because be, before uh, engaging in exultant praise, Christian disciples should approach with penitence and examine their inner selves, just as Isaiah did in Isaiah chapter 6. We also gather in expectation of meeting God and that he will receive the worship. Worship services should consist of more than just singing songs. The church is 2,000 years old. And in that time, a lot of resources can be found to help people worship 
apart from singing songs. There are items like responsive prayers and psalms, whereby prayers and psalms are spoken between the congregation to each other and to the leader. There are times of silence or times of spoken liturgy, where truths of God are spoken and heard. Saying the Apostles' Creed or Nicene Creed helps build the body in affirming their belief in an awesome God who is worthy of worship. Times of worship should be more diverse than just singing songs, and they should express the cultural and personality diverse of the people worshipping. Remember Jesus and certainly the early church participated in services which would certainly have contained liturgy, scripture reading and the songs. Other core parts of some worship services are the Holy Communion and Baptism. These were fundamental in churches in the New Testament period and they are just as important today. Holy Communion is where we as Christian disciples remember Jesus' death for our sin, acceptance of his death for us, and our dependence on him for our spiritual life. Baptism is where the Christian disciple identifies with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. A third element of worship is the reading and the preaching of the Bible. This is where God's word is read in public. This is where God's word is preached faithfully, so as that God's word can be applied to the hearers' lives and the speakers' lives. Sermons can be the pinnacle of a worship service as God's revealed word is expounded, talked about and explained. Yet sadly for a lot of people, it's not even considered worship when it certainly is. The whole of a church worship service should be where the spiritually comfortable are discomforted and those spiritually uncomfortable are comforted. From 1 Corinthians 14 verse 25 Worship should be where non-Christians present can proclaim God is really among you. So often our church worship services are flat, feeble and weak spiritually. At one extreme in churches we have worship services that are flippant and uh, no consideration to make worship an awe-inspiring time of devotion to an awesome God. At the other extreme, we have worship services where everybody looks like they've been sucking on lemons and where grace is obviously lacking. Somewhere in between is where public worship should be, in the broad spectrum of being neither trivialized nor graceless, is where our church worship services should be. Sometimes we need to worship, even if we don't feel like it, and pray for God to help us to worship him. Over all this is 1 Corinthians 14 verse 26, which plainly states everything that is done must be useful to all and build them up in the Lord. Public worship. Public worship is for the encouragement of the gathered, worshipping group of believers and non-believers, and not for the individual worshipper alone. The modern construct of only worshipping when it's enjoyable or because the experience feels right or its entertainment is not a biblical construct. When you find yourself in a worship service with others, as long as what is being said and sung is biblical, keep worshipping, even if the style or the method is not to your own personal taste. Just because the church down the road from you worships in a different style to you doesn't make their worship invalid. We have a God worthy of all types of worship, don't grieve the Holy Spirit by trying to validate your own style over a different style by saying your church worships better than any other. The Holy Spirit works in different places in different ways. Stop limiting the Holy Spirit through the energy and power of this Holy Spirit. Any and all acts of church worship can be done in reverence, in truth and in submission to the Lord Jesus Christ done regardless of our own personal tastes, enjoyment level, or experience. main thing is to worship in spirit and in truth, and that is surely to be a cause of joy, regardless of worship style. Let us use the diversity of worship styles in order to worship the one true and living God. Thank you.